Every morning, 100 commuters travel west to east. They have two options for their journey, by trolley and by car. The trolley is public transit. As a consequence, it doesn't matter how many people choose to take it. It'll still have the same travel time. In this case, 20 minutes. In contrast, travel by car is constrained by traffic. As a consequence, travel times here depend on the total number of cars on the road. And in particular, that time is 10 plus X divided by five minutes, where X is the total number of cars on the road. Part of that 10 minute baseline is because of the mountain. The freeway has to inefficiently go around it, which adds five minutes to every driver's travel time. One day, the city travel manager gets fed up with the situation and makes an announcement. This hill adds five minutes to everyone's drive time. Let's build a tunnel through it. If implemented, the new road would go directly through that mountain. And as a consequence, travel times will change to five plus X divided by five minutes. As the city manager said, the hill does indeed shave five minutes off of that baseline time. Note that the city does not have enough maintenance crews to keep both of the roads open. As such, if they build a road through the mountain, the road that goes around the mountain will be permanently closed. Just before the project is scheduled to begin, a game theorist rushes in and yells that this is a terrible idea. Your puzzle for today is to explain why the game theorist thinks that. And while you're working through that puzzle, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is that this is an application of Nash Equilibrium, which is a subject within Chapter 1 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the answer? Let's start off by focusing on the existing road and how travel times work under those circumstances. Clearly, not all 100 commuters would want to take the trolley. If they all did, then each would have a travel time of 20 minutes. But any given commuter could realize that by taking their car instead, they would arrive at their destination in just over 10 minutes, much better than sticking to the trolley. However, it can't be that they all take their cars either. If they were to, X would equal 100, and the total travel time would be 30 minutes each. But like before, any given commuter could realize that they could switch their travel plans, this time take the trolley, and reduce their travel time to just 20 minutes. As such, the commuters must divide themselves, with some taking their cars and the others taking the trolley. Furthermore, if each commuter is taking an optimal action, it can't be the case that a trolley commuter would want to switch to their car instead, and a driver cannot want to switch to taking the trolley. Well, we can figure out when that would be the case by setting these two travel times equal to each other. In other words, we need 20 minutes to be equal to 10 plus X divided by five minutes. And if we solve for X, we get X equal to 50. Under these circumstances, when 50 people take their cars and 50 people take the trolley, the commute time for each individual is 20 minutes. Every commuter is satisfied with what they are doing under these circumstances. If a driver switched to taking the trolley, they would have a 20 minute drive time turn into a 20 minute trolley time. If someone taking the trolley were to switch to taking their vehicle, they would actually cause a little bit more stress on the road, and as a consequence, their travel time would increase from 20 minutes to a shade over 20 minutes. As such, 
this is an equilibrium, and this is what we should expect commuters to be doing in the long term. Let's compare that to what would happen if we rerouted the freeway to go through the mountain. Like before, the commuters need to divide themselves between driving and taking the trolley. And for everyone to be taking an optimal action, we're going to need the travel times to be equal to one another. In other words, 20 needs to be equal to 5 plus x divided by 5. And if we solve for x, we get x equal to 75. So by one metric, the new freeway is a success. We went from 50 people using the freeway, now up to 75 people using it. But if you look at the metric that really matters, travel time, we see a problem. The commute remains 20 minutes for everyone. People are taking their cars, still taking 20 minutes. People are taking the trolley, still taking 20 minutes. That should strike you as odd. We have added more infrastructure, and yet we have seen no improvement to commute times. What's going on here? Well, the central problem is that the road increases demand for the road. And the number of new cars on the freeway exactly offset the gains made by having a more efficient route. Another way of thinking about this is in terms of externalities. Every additional car on the road causes a negative externality to all other cars. It makes the commute time slower. And because we are all comparing our drive time to what the trolley time would be, we're going to fill up that road until it no longer makes sense to increase it anymore. And with the baseline 20 minutes of trolley travel time not changing, that means the road is ultimately going to still take 20 minutes. This is a central problem with increasing the efficiency of roadways. The more attractive a road is, the more cars are going to drive on it, until the benefits of the increased efficiency are canceled out by that extra demand. This effect is known as the Downs-Thompson paradox. And as someone who grew up in Los Angeles, let me tell you from personal experience, it is a real thing. As a final note, it's worth contrasting improvements to the roadway to even minor improvements to the public transit system. In this case, that means shaving the trolley time by only one minute. Just like before, we would expect that in the long term, travel times are going to end up being equal so that people who are taking the roadway are going to get to their destination just as fast as people who are taking the trolley. That means setting those two numbers equal to each other. And when we do that, we arrive at x equal to 45. Thus, a few fewer people are going to be on the road, and a few more people are going to be taking the trolley. This works out to being a commute time of 19 minutes for everyone. Thus, we have finally seen some improvement. Moreover, even if you were going to be a driver, regardless of whether there was an improvement to the trolley system, you benefit from that improvement to the trolley system. That's because there are fewer cars on the road, and with fewer cars on the road, there's a smaller externality to you, which means you actually get to your destination faster. And indeed, paradoxically, you're doing better than if there were direct improvements to the roadway. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.